Hey everybody, welcome to Sprickin Studios. I am your host, Mr. Sprickin. Yeah! And what are we gonna be doing today? We're going to be painting up and customizing a Frame Arms Girl Go Ride. It's gonna be awesome and exciting. I'm going to do some kind of World War II-ish kind of super weathered look. So that's gonna be awesome and fun. So let's dive right in. Let's get on with this project. So I worked through my bits of drawers and I came up with all of these neat accessories and such. Yeah, we got her a shovel, we got her this canister thingy, which I think is going to double as like a thing for food. Uh, it's from a Megami device kit. Uh, we have these other Megami device kit uh, sergeant stripe thingies we're going to use. We have these kind of, I don't know, containers of some kind. A uh, grenade, this old looking uh, AK, possibly. We might swap this out for another gun, we'll see. And then, uh, yeah, from some old toys, I cut off some pouches. And, uh, yeah, we got a knife there too. And I uh, got a backpack, and I used some MSG, uh, what are these? Uh, coils, something or other. I use them to make uh, some backpack straps. And uh, it's basically just a normal first generation Gorai kit, but I took a breastplate from the uh, Gorai Kai white version uh, to add to her, because I thought that'd be a better look. We have her head armor piece here, and we're just gonna make some decisions. Hmm. I wanna put a nice gash in this. So let's grab our saw blade exacto here and we will just yeah, let's pick a spot and we will just saw right into that yep can't go back now this is a part of her look I think I want to do some kind of dents hmm then I'm going to take our trusty pin vise and just drill a tiny bit. Here's some of the examples of the damage that we did with our files and other tools. You can see I got a little bit of a wound there going crazy on my thumb. Yeah. So we have all this, and we're going to add some texture with Mr. Cement. Yes, texture, I say. And uh, there's going to be a tutorial on this coming, uh, a sprick and hack job uh, after this video in a few days. So stay tuned, and I'll show you how to do it. Check out this nice looking texture we got. Yeah. Perfect. We have it on all of our armor bits and you know what I'm thinking I'm thinking we don't even have to prime these babies we can just start painting them because uh, the paint will take to the uh, putty surface uh, just like it would primer the extra teeth will make it easy peasy so bonus yeah this super new hair mr. Sprickin courtesy of my lovely girlfriend Yes, I have the new spring, summer locks. Hmm. Oh wait, I'm supposed to do this. Let's do some priming. We got our Citadel primers, our lead belcher, and our gray. Yeah, we're gonna be using them for a bunch of pieces, but uh, mainly over here for our backpack. But they are a very different bendy, uh, rubbery material. So, I took one of the runners that they came on. Oink. Oh, those are MSG parts, by the way. And I need to see if this can be painted and how. Um, so I'm going to try priming it. And then, yeah. If it works, then uh, that's great. If not, I have no idea what I'll do. Uh, I just thought of something. I don't really have a color scheme going on here. What am I going to do? 
I don't know. I'm tired. But I have lots of paint, so I can come up with something. We need some paints. And good thing we have all of these AK paints, because they have uh, some really good, uh, super historic, historically accurate uh, World War... Uh, what the heck am I saying? So here's our color palette that we worked with. All AK uh, paint range, paint, wait, all AK paint line. Um, we used uh, flat black and uh, slate, some uh, SEC 15 olive drab, regular olive drab, no, olive drab faded. Then we got uh, light green and uh, number eight, earth red. Then we got buff, I really like buff. And then we did her hair, um, some desert, British desert pink. Yeah, so a nice uh, range of colors here, worked well. I forgot to put on the rivets, so I ended up painting this uh, strip of sticky stud thingies, um, and I'm just super gluing them onto the armor bits. It's kind of a painstaking uh, thing to do, but kind of gives it some some good detail, and it'll be fun to weather up. Oh, and in case you're wondering what these uh, rivet thingies are uh, from the Arts and Crafts store, it's just this strip of kind of jeweled stickers. Yeah. Oh, hello. Morning time here at Spricken Studios. Got my cup of cozy coffee. This is for you, Joe. Mm. Oh, morning coffee is best. Got some cookies. And these cookies are best when dipped. Mm. Sprickens always have at least one sweet thing in the morning with breakfast to start the day. And it looks like we're still going to have a lot of painting to do because right now she is just kind of a big green blob. So I need to define some of these parts. Let's have a peek. So check out what we got so far. Here's some of the armor. Yeah. With the, uh, what are those things called? Rivets. And I don't know if we can get in close and see some of the texture on this armor. Yeah, kind of nice, and some damage here and there. Um, yeah, as you can see, she is various greens, um, but uh, not too much difference. Uh, I mean, there is a difference in the greens, but I need uh, I need things to pop more, to stand out, a touch. So I'm going to be attempting some camo. And uh, I started kind of getting some ideas for the colors here, not necessarily for the pattern, but I might start doing some of this on her armor. Brr. So cold and windy out there. But 
since I have the sun on my side for now, it's a good time to airbrush. I'm wanting the camo kind of pattern basic thing to run on one leg and then up over this thigh and then maybe mm, maybe kind of another piece on the arm and waving off over there. So kind of like a couple basic stripes. Yeah. So basically I'm going to leave most of her together while I spray this pattern and hopefully I don't make too big of a mess. But uh, I'll show you. I'll show you how it goes. <laughs> I'm so scared. I'm going to ruin it. This is a good uh, moment to encourage all of you that it can be scary ruining progress or ruining a kit or doing anything like that. But we should kind of push those thoughts out of our head. These are expensive and it is valid to worry about, you know, your kits. But I think things can always be salvaged and rescued. A little bit of patience and uh, care. And then also if you get really stuck, you can look up, uh, you know, how to fix things like broken parts or remove paint or do whatever. But yeah, all is not lost ever. Unless your kit melts or disintegrates or something, then... Do you hear that wind? Um, I want to do one of her face plates with uh, some camo kind of uh, paint on it. And uh, let's see. Oop, I think this light sand will come in handy. So yeah, maybe the greens, soot, and we'll find a brown whether it's the orange rust or maybe regular rust or mud actually, yeah. Let's dive right in here. So before I put the eye decals on, I noticed that if you put the eye decals on um, and then put any kind of weathering pigment over top, it will kind of outline the, the decal itself, you know, so you can see, you, know, you can kind of see here. Yeah, it'll kind of outline the decal on the face, which I don't really want to do. Um, and I, Mr. Softer does help this, but you can still kind of see it with the pigment. So what I'm going to try and do is put the pigment on first, and then see if the decals will go on over top. I love working with this stuff. On its own, I think we're looking a bit weird and strange. Yep, I understand. But uh, let's see what uh, adding the decals is going to do to this. But first, for sure, I am going to give this a top coat. Hmm. Even in some rain, there is construction outside. Neighbors putting in a new old backyard. Who knows? But it will not deter me. Um, because I need to do a lot of things. We have, uh, various hand detail stuff to paint. Hmm. Yeah. Look at all this stuff. All these bits. And so far the rest of her is looking great and the armor is awesome um, but we need to do some hand painting of some chipping for some of the more damaged area of the armor like as you can see here yeah so I'm just gonna take uh, some black I think perhaps or a dark green and I'm just gonna do some hand painting around that 
So I'm just going to be using some Citadel black uh, paint. So I'm just going to hit... Well, first I need a little bit more paint on this brush. So I'm just going to hit the edge just a little bit here and there. And where there's this battle damage in here, I'm just going to do a bit more. So I'm just going to go down the edge. Yeah. Time to throw some of this fuel stain engine fuel and oil wash. Seems like that could look good on the treads. Ooh. Let's just slap it on. Throw caution to the wind. I suppose I should just be doing it on one to see how it looks, but it's just a wash. What's the worst that can happen, right? <laughs> These washes are really easy to remove as well, or to clean up, uh, just using some enamel thinner, some white spirit stuff. Yeah, it's no problem. Time to do the old before and after spin. Oh, wait a second. Wait, no, I forgot to do the before spin. No! Okay, I got a little excited and I just uh, broke up her into pieces and I painted her and customized her straight away. I didn't take a picture of what the regular Gorai looked like. I mean, not a picture. I didn't spin her. What can I do? Hmm. Maybe I can uh, run the gauntlet of junk around here. Okay, out of my way, please. Mr. Light, you can go over here. There's got to be a way. Yes, Gorai Kai. I need your assistance. It's not perfect, but this is the best we can do for a regular go rai look. Here she is, all completed. She has her uh, camel faceplate there. There's the bare essentials. On her flip side, she has a cute little bear tattoo on her upper back. She's got a bunch of different hand options. She's got a couple face plates, just a basic open mouth, and then one of these uh, ones with the anti-glare stuff you put under your eyes. You know, baseball players and people in sports do it all the time. 
we have a uh, canister that she wears on her uh, leg and I think I can imagine some food or maybe water or maybe oil something that she could need in a canister could be in there and then as for her belt uh, things uh, you know random pouches a knife a grenade more little cute random pouches a shovel that fixes on the back uh, of her and this backpack is uh, kitted out with a uh, communication kind of walkie thing going on and uh, a nice uh, metal container for other things that she would need and then we have uh, just a nice uh, basic rifle here so see these wonderful pockets on her skirt belt thingy oops yeah she has a grenade there pouch thing for her knife holder yeah so if you guys haven't tried this out yet um i highly highly recommend it and that is using magnets isn't that amazing these parts are just held in place with magnets and it's a great way to customize your kits giving them detail that you can just take on and off to give a different look and you don't have to fuss around with glue or anything oh it just saved me so much trouble and it allowed me to just take this build and customization to the next level and i love it happy birthday gorai yeah i just learned that it was frame girl gorai's birthday april 18th so i figured we'd give her a little birthday bash over here Got a nice cake, card, present. Jinrai is ready to cut the cake. Yeah, and our two Gorai's over here enjoying themselves and some of their Frame Arms girls, buddies, and other friends here to join in and wish a happy birthday. Yeah. You look great, ladies. Very nice. Well, oh, that was a fun project. I had uh, such a good time with those accessories. I'm just a sucker for accessories. I just kind of realized that. Uh, anytime a kit is going to be customized, it's going to have plenty of different things. Yes. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. What do you guys think? Do you like it? I had a lot of fun doing it. Took about a week. That's a pretty good time frame. Slowed down by some construction and such, making all kinds of noise, making it hard for me to film anything. But what can you do? The show must go on. But another thing I took uh, a step away from uh, during this build uh, to do was to say goodbye to my girlfriend's 21 year old cat Puss Puss. Puss Puss passed away um, and uh, it was very sad. She's a wonderful cat. We loved her super much and she'd been with my girlfriend for a very long time. Uh, so it's always tough when you lose a, a friend. Um, but she had a long good life, lived the best life a cat could ever live and uh, yeah she'll be missed. And uh, I want to dedicate this video to her and to everybody out there who has furry friends that they love and care for and keep them company, especially during this pandemic time when everyone's stuck inside. Love those animals and don't take them for granted. And uh, yeah, don't take anybody for granted. Show love and uh, yeah, it'll come back to you. Oh, there goes the saw again. I guess I should wrap this up. Um, so yes, thank you for everything from my friends in the Facebook group and uh, if you want to join go there at uh, Mecha Girl Modelers HQ yes and uh, join and yeah meet all the wonderful people who share this hobby so stay tuned Friday for a tutorial on how I did this armor yes it's super easy super quick anyone can do it you could do it because I did it first try worked great all right this is Mr. Spriggan yeah Saying happy building, uh, hug your loved ones, and don't take anything for granted. Bye-bye.